for, for, for many, many years as a professional journalist, I've, uh, I thought for myself that, um, that we did indeed have a free press and, and uh, therefore we also uh, did have a democracy. And I couldn't imagine any way how could they be able to control the journalists if, if it wasn't free journalism. Um, but it's, it's, not that, uh, it's not that difficult at all. Uh, and what I do see today, having left Denmark for uh, uh, three, three years ago, uh, in the international community there are dozens of journalists, real journalists, uh, who no more uh, work for the mainstream media. They've gone their own way, they publish books, they have websites, they make lectures, uh, um, because they remain faith to the basic idea about journalism, which is you have to be independent. Um, what is happening in all over uh, in all the Western countries is that through constructions like the Bilderberg, which is um, quite known, uh, they have made s secret societies, they're not secret, but societies uh, for selected journalists. Uh, and these selected journalists are the ones uh, who have the responsibility to tell you and me about international politics or about geopolitics or uh, current wars or whatever. These groups of journalists are the ones who travel around the world with the politicians. Uh, they live a first top-class life uh, and they meet in these clubs and have conferences all over the world and you're only allowed to join this club if you write the right way. Uh, you'll have to understand, when I started as a journalist, uh, I started uh, for, a ha for six months, I made nothing but obituaries, meaning I, I'm very good at talking to people who just uh, lost one of their dear ones. Uh, but that goes to show, uh, you don't get to make an interview with the Prime Minister of Denmark uh, just by being a good journalist and, and wanting to do something. It takes years and years. And after writing obituaries, you, you go uh, a level up and then you make small interviews with uh, intellectuals or, with, uh, uh, or you write about the um, biggest tomato of the season in the, uh, in the village. And there's a long, long way, takes 10 or 15 years before you're allowed to write about international politics. And at that point, you will have entered one of these clubs or else you will not be allowed to write. So that's the way, as I showed in the lecture, uh, that's the way that the front pages on all the world news papers today are totally alike. Exactly the same information on exactly the same page on so-called independent media, uh, but they are filled, the, the blanks are filled out by a little group of journalists who have nothing to do whatsoever with journalism anymore, but are merely propaganda. They are the ones, as John Pilger, a very good colleague of mine, said, uh, had they only done their job regarding the Iraq war, we would never ever have entered Iraq and millions of people would still be alive. And it goes for 9-11 too, which all good, every good journalist know, had they only done their basic job uh, we wouldn't have entered the war on terror, which has destabilized the whole region, killed millions of people, making more millions homeless, created the whole refugee crisis, and making the American war industry uh, hugely rich in the process. It's an absolute uncomprehensible scenario, uh, but the big media journalists are closing their eyes. So. Journalism, one of my good friends, uh, Paul Taylor, a journalist uh, having been uh, by the BBC and the CNN and Al Jazeera, and he's now making uh, with us on Free 21, he says uh, that in his opinion, journalism died on 9-11. On that day, from that day, they stopped asking the basic questions, basic critical attitude against the people you have to control as media, vanished on that day and has never ever been there uh, ever since. So 
It's on the internet through good journalists still doing their job. What we are doing, we, we are taking their material and formatting and bringing it into paper form in a traditional magazine, uh, which is both electronically and, and physical. And because it's physical, it's all of a sudden it's analog. And that's the whole point. We make digital information analog. Uh, in that way, it cannot be controlled, can't be uh, um, uh, censored. It can be copied by people, distributed by people. Uh, so we are actually creating a new press uh, based on very, very old values, but with new technique. The output of it uh, is exactly as it could have uh, been for 30 years. And it has an impact when, when you uh, make journalism like that. It has an impact far beyond any medium that I have ever uh, known. And it's far beyond what, I've, uh, what I could dream of. The basic idea of what we're doing is that every article should be uh, layouted itself as a high value uh, paper article. And we put in the sources uh, for most of the articles so people can check for themselves. Uh, fact box and uh, 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 pictures and captions and copyright information, all the stuff we need, we put in uh, as the first step. That's why today in Berlin or in Germany uh, in general, uh, in a lot of cities there are groups printing our new articles voluntarily and distributing them in their neighborhood, putting the articles at the uh, doctors in his uh, waiting room or in the uh, subway or all over. Uh, I, I can't move one day through Berlin without seeing either one of our magazines or one of our articles being displaced in a cafe or a restaurant or whatever. People are reading them in the subway uh, when I uh, travel there. So we, we really have an impact. We really have showed that if you make a qualitative journalistic magazine on paper, people will take it. Um, and uh, I, I couldn't have dreamed of, of uh, that uh, development, but it is actually so. And it's, it's even bigger because we are, right now we are preparing a Russian edition, special edition to distribution in Ukraine. And it's, it's uh, the um, in university in Donetsk who has asked us to do it. So we are, we are in, in, in the newspaper business, we are in the media business. We are producing a media which has an impact in the real world. So it's, it's, really, it's really absolutely crazy.